a df. So you just need variations actually. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If you want to write this as a Riemann sum, so this would be the sum that depends on the values of f and the variation of df. Mm -hmm. okay. But if you have a function f okay, whose quadratic variations are not finite, that means you can't define it. Okay. Ronin motion is one of the cases. So in other words, you can't substitute Ronin motion. Okay. Riemann is still being self-strained. You can't define the entire okay. okay. So I've given it in a bit messy way, so but I hope you got the sketch, so do it precisely. Mm -hmm. All right. So what is the next thing? The next thing is what we did for the discrete time stochastic processes, we would like to do the same for, um, you know, for the continuous time processes. So those things which are analog to the state time process are not get into the detail. Just give you a picture and do it for yourself. I'll read it for yourself. Because the arguments are not very different from um, the state time process. For continuous time process, I mean the, the philosophy of argument is there. Imagine, you know, in discrete time processes, we, we proved that the stop the process is a martingale. So if you have a martingale, okay, you stop it, okay, the stop process is still a martingale. But I want to do for the same case actually. Now, now imagine you have a continuous process, okay, um, and you have this continuous process which is kind of martingale, whatever that means, I'll define it in a minute, and you are stopping it actually. So would that stop process would be a martingale? The answer is yes. So how am I going to do it? So roughly the argument would be the density argument. Okay. So I'll I'll run the same argument. So, so what do you mean by the density argument? So if you want to prove what you want to prove a property for a continuum actually, okay, for for an interval zero to t. So what you're going to do? You're going to split that, you know, what do you call that continuum that that interval into, for example. You know some subset, okay, of it that is dense in it. Okay, and you, so another, for example, we're going to take a dynamic rationals, okay, so some rational, some kind of rational numbers. So I have interval zero to t. I split it into the rational points, okay, and the process that you know is defined on the entire interval zero to t would also be defined on that rational point set. Then what I'm going to do that 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 process which is defined on, for example, discrete you know, chunks, this is like a discrete stochastic process, and that discrete stochastic process has all those properties which you have previously. Okay. And now we want we want that that discrete stochastic process should converge in some sense to the continuous time stochastic process. Okay. And uh, the convergence, we can always easily achieve convergence because we are always assuming that our processes are continuous processes. In other words, you know, when you have continuity, it's easy to pass the limit. Okay, so the argument is the density argument. You want to prove something for continuous time stochastic process, you know, do the same on a, you know, discrete set. Okay. And put your discrete time process result and pass the limit. So, due to the continuity, the same thing, the same result would be inherited by, you know, by the limit of that discrete process, which is continuous. Okay. So maybe this is a lot of waving of hands. You know? 
as supervisor Paul said, you know, there are two ways to prove the thing. One is to do it, another way is by doing by waving the hands. Okay. This is like waving hands, but you know, the bigger picture is this. Okay. So I'll do some exemplary proofs, okay. but I'll not do the whole proofs actually. You will get the sense there. So it's like running a density argument. You want to prove something. On an interval, just prove it that it's true on uh, some dense subset of it. Okay, then you have ways to basically connect, you know, discreteness with uh, within modulus. Okay, all right. So here are some definitions. So, so imagine I have, you know, a continuous time process. Okay, continuous time process. I'm going to always denote by, by this symbol a filtration that is generated by the continuous time process. Okay, so Ft, and I'll, I'm going to put the x here to remind you that okay, you are generating this filtration. Uh, through the profit x, I'm um, going to presume that this is equal to x t. Uh, you know the sigma field generated by x s such that you know s is any number between zero to t. Okay. In other words, by this I mean that this is a set of all information about the process x up to the time t. In other words, it contains the entire history of the time of the process That's the history of the process. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to call it. So, so obviously, for each instant, you can have, you know, such a history. So, so this will be a filtration. Okay. So this will be a sequence of sigma fields. This filtration, natural filtration, filtration generated by. Generated by the processes. Okay. For the general stochastic processes, so in other words, we how we define this continuous time stochastic process, we said a continuous time stochastic process is a process that is roughly uh, measurable with respect to the product sigma field, actually. Okay. But I would like to define, you know, an interesting kind of a, a process. I'm not giving it a name, so your task is to give this process a name and let's see that whether you reach to the same name as the book or not. Because I think this name is a very natural name that is given to the process, actually. Okay. So, so here's a definition. So imagine I have a process X. Okay. Um, so it's a stochastic that X B and stochastic process. Continuous time is stochastic process, obviously. It's a continuous stochastic process. And uh, I'm gonna say that this continuous stochastic process is uh, is um, okay. Let's first define adapted. Is adapted to a filtration f t. Okay, where t takes the value in the time domain t if each of the x t is f t measurable. Okay. Each of x t is. Okay, so that's the definition of the process being adopted to a filtration. The second definition is the second definition is that imagine you have a process X. So imagine you have been given a filtration of the okay. 
Imagine you have a filtration of D and you have a process X, you know, defined on, which, which, which takes two inputs, uh, omega cross D and throws the values in R. Okay. And it's a kind of a process uh, for which for each T, in T, Xt is Fp cross B zero T measurably. Okay. Cross B zero T measurable. Okay. What is the difference between this definition and a generic definition of the stochastic process? Can you spot the difference? What the key difference? So, in general definition of process, you say that your each of the xt are maybe the entire process x, in other words, this map x omega t, okay, um, the omega t to x of t uh, omega t, okay, is measurable, but measurable with respect to what? The underlying sigma field, okay, product with the Borel sigma algebra. Or else in algebra or where? Over the entire domain actually, whatever the domain you have. Okay. But here you have a bit different you know, situation actually. You don't have F, but you have F. Okay. What do you think? If I say um, that give such a process a name, for what name you would like to give it? So, so, so you can see that this is like a global measurability. Okay. Why this is roughly a local measurability. Okay. So, at each instant, process should not only be measurable with respect to this, because it's a stochastic process, so it should be this measurable, but it should be measurable with respect to the filtration or the product of the, you know, um, sigma field F T and, you know, the Borel sigma, Borel sigma the right time zero T actually. So what is happening? So you can assume it as that somehow this field is evolving, evolving over the time because this is not a static field actually. Kind of evolving over the time. As time goes on, you know, the it is evolving. Okay, and you are you are making sure that at each instant, t e you get updated. X t is here. Okay, so if I say give such thing as the name, actually. updated stochastic process. Updated stochastic process. Um, or we call it, it's a progressively measurable process. Okay. <laughs> it's a very natural thing. Progressively measurable. So you have progressing, but your measurability is not lost. Okay. Progressively measurable. So again, okay. you have a filtration, you have a process, Call this process progressively measurable if at each instant t x t is this measurable. In other words, x t is adapted to this sequence of the filtration. Okay. Uh, then you're going to call that then this process x is progressively. Measurable.
And you will often see that when you are dealing with a theory of stochastic processes or maybe stochastic analysis, you keep this assumption. You always assume your processes to be progressively imaginability actually. And this is, this is a natural assumption actually. And we will see that later on that if we don't have this adaptedness, I mean if you see essentially what I am saying that the process XT is adapted to this sequence of filtration. Um, and this is one of the crucial assumptions. I'm going to see that uh, if you have uh, a profit which is progressively measurable, a lot of things become a lot easier okay. when you want to do the analysis. This is one of the crucial assumptions that we are always going to have. Okay. I would like to prove a quick proposition. And please very carefully see the argument of the proposition because I'm going to use the density argument. Um, so, this proposition is kind of gives you a sufficient condition for a process to be progressively measurable. And that sufficient condition is satisfied already by the Brownian motion. So, the Brownian motion is progressively measurable. So, I'll not prove that Brownian motion is progressively measurable. It's just going to be the consequence of this definition actually. Okay? So imagine I have a process X is defined over and it's B a path continuous and it's a path continuous process X. So you need only path continuity. So if your process is path continuous, it's less than progressive. Okay. Then X is progressive. Can you get a feel for the progressive measurability? This is important. This is way like you know, it's important that we should we should have a feel for the this definition. The, def the feel for the definition is at every single instant, your measurability is not lost actually. Okay. So, in other words, okay, you have a process X which is measurable with respect to this big sigma algebra F cross P0 P. But for knowing XT or fetching information for XT, you don't need this big sigma algebra. You can have a you know, a simple, small sigma algebra that can still give you the information about that process. Okay. So, and that sigma algebra is, as time is progressing, it's, it, you know, updating itself actually. The more and more information is accumulating. And hence, the process is also getting measurable with respect to that, that updating, you know, what we call sigma algebra. It's a perfect name for it, I think. You can really see the progression over the time. Anyway, so there's a proof. There's a quick proof. And this is an abstract result. Okay. It's, it's an abstract result. So imagine so I need to prove uh, so I need to prove or I need to just prove that XT is this measurable. That's what I would like to show. So let me fix an instant T. Let us fix T. How does, you know, the process is going to look like, so if this is time axis and this is x axis, so one of the potential paths could be something like this axis. Okay. Just go along. That is the case. And I'm fixing an instant okay. I'm fixing an instant And I'm splitting. Okay, this interval 0 to t into the dyadic rational set. So, in other words, I am splitting it into some rational points. And what are those rational points? So, the first point is say 0, the other point is t, but not just t, but t raised to 2 raised to n actually, where n is a face number. That I'll later on take a limit up to. I'll take that n to 
So the second instant is 2t over 2 raised to n, the third instant is 3t over 2 raised to n, and so on and so forth. Okay? So what will be the last instant? It's going to be 2 raised to n t over 2 raised to n. So therefore, 2 raised to n, 2 raised to n goes on the end of the so this is the real trajectory of the process and uh, I'm fixing an instant and I broken it up. And using this continuous stochastic process, I'm defining a discrete stochastic process. Okay? And what is that discrete stochastic process? Simple. On each interval, take the value of uh, this process. So I'm, pro I'm, I'm defining a new process basically. Okay? Let's call it, uh, let me give it a name. Let's call this process Xn. Okay, but Xn borrows its values from continuous time process in this manner. That on each interval, take the right end point and see what is the value over. So I'm giving it a name that okay, this is my X1. Okay. And this is my X2. Like power and so on and so forth, okay? And the H point, right? And I would like to invite you to think actually what if, if I will, if I will make this, you know, mash more fine actually? In other words, I agree then. So let's, let's play it out. So what's going to happen? This point which was away is going to come now. Okay? So, so I'm making it for example even final. Okay? So this is going to come really near to it. Okay? And I'm making for example even more final. So it's gonna be you know, the dot between these two dots. Can you see? If you're gonna make, you know, if you're gonna make uh, this Mash more and more and more fine, you can really approximate this continuous thing by these dots actually, these discrete values. Okay, so this is something that I would like to roughly write it as. I mean, if you understood the picture, you understood the proof actually. So, so what I have just said, I'm just going to write it. That's it. Okay. And if, if you haven't understood, I mean, you can give me a shout out. You know, I can again say. So imagine this is the current leap point. Okay. So make it final. So this will be the point. And make it, for example, increase the n. So your refinement is going to be fine actually. Okay. So you're going to have. In other words, the more and more you're going to find, you know, make your, you know, mash fine, you will see that. You know, you're gonna get more and more closer points actually. Okay, and which are going to fit in really to the curve. Okay. And I can pass the limit. I can pass the limit because I have a quantity of the Okay. Uh, Let's not say this orally. So I fixed a T and I'm defining um, you know XN of okay, I'm defining this process XN of S omega is equal to X evaluated at so if S is in Say the interval uh, k t over two raised to n and k plus one t over two raised to n. And next, imagine if s is there, then 
I'm assigning the value xn at this f and x evaluated at the left hand point a plus 1 e over 2 raised to n and omega. Okay. Where k is obviously could be anything 0, 1, 2, and so on and so on and so forth. Right? So, like 2 raised to n minus 1. For the in other words, if you want to evaluate xn at some point s, see that that point s lies in which interval? Okay, sub interval. So wherever it lies, just assign it the value, you know, of the you know what's called right point of that sub interval. Actually, so what is the interesting thing about this? This, this definition. Obviously, this is a number now. This is a number. Okay? Because x throws values into. Uh -huh. So it's a number. So it's a and it's a fixed number actually. You can see it's a fixed number in entire interval. Okay? It's a fixed number in entire interval. So x n takes a fixed value in each interval. So it's a constant. So is constant function measurable? Yes. It's measurable. Measurable with respect to what? It's uh, so since this is constant, I'm going to say this is f t. Okay, b zero t measurable. Okay, because you know I'm only talking about this in terms. Everything is you know. Uh, well, you say everything is uh, up to the time t. So I'm not talking about the time after the t. Okay. So why this is measurable? This is measurable because this is constant. So constants are always measurable. So x n is a constant. It takes a fixed value. So it's measurable. Right. Now, if this is measurable, I can say so. So I can say this x n. Is basically a piecewise constant function and it's measurable, right? It's a piecewise constant, so x n is a, is a, right, is a piecewise constant function by constant function. I can treat it as a map from 0 to t into omega into r. Okay. So, so this happens. Okay. This happens. So I have a sequence of a measurable functions. I have a sequence of measurable functions which are measurable with respect to this sigma field. So if this sequence is going to converge, for sure, okay. So it's going to converge to what? It's going to converge to log of the continuity of x. This sequence is going to converge, and it's going to converge to the x. And I know that if I have a sequence of measurable function converging to something, that limit must also be measurable. And that means that, you know, the process xt is this measure of the continuous. You see the argument? Okay. So this is piecewise continuous function which is measurable. So we are happy with this. Uh, let me write it, just write it. By path continuity, you see, by path continuity means it just treat you know, x as omega as a as a simple, you know, real value function actually. So it's continuous function, okay? Uh, by path continuity, I'm saying that this xn as omega, okay, is going to converge to x as omega, okay? As n goes to infinity. So continuity implies this. 
now I'm saying that since this sequence is a sequence of measurable functions, and we did a result in measure theory which says that if we have a sequence of measurable functions and that converges to some limit, that limit must also be measurable. So this is measurable. Sir, I don't get why would it converge to this. It, 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 oh, okay. So one thing is that you can intuitively see. So think about it. 